I've got something today that really made me happy, the .aio RBA. Welcome to the Vapor Trail channel. I'm Tony. Today we are looking at the .aio RDA. Now this is an accessory that's sold separately for the .aio mod, and that's what this is right here. Now I have to say, I maybe I didn't give this enough credit when I first reviewed it. At this point, after using this thing a lot, because yeah, my drip tip's pretty messy here, sorry about that. But after using this thing a lot, the only complaint I really have is that the airflow is in a funky position. It would have been better over here, because where it's at, if I'm holding it like this, I tend to cover part of it, or I've got to, you have to figure out another way to hold it. Typically I'll hold it like this and fire with the forefinger. That way I'm not covering it. That's really the only complaint I have about it. It's perfect fit and finish. It's actually a beautiful little mod. And just an example of how sturdy it is. See that little tiny dent right there? I dropped this thing from about waist high and that's all I got out of it. So that's that's not too bad. Machining and everything on this thing is pretty much impeccable. I love it. So what I've got inside the package right now, that's the actual tank and coil that came inside of this. I popped that out because when you get this kit, you're going to get an extra tank and and the RBA itself. The manual that comes with it is actually quite helpful. One thing that they do tell you down here is they actually give you coil suggestions. Build your coil on a 2.5 millimeter diameter tool, making five or six wraps. They're recommending 24 gauge A1 resistance wire, Canthal, and they even tell you your coil position and how to wick it. So that's uh, that's that's pretty helpful. There's other information in there as well. Now I get it. If you like the coils, that's great. You can use that, but it would be a good idea to have one of these things because in the future, we don't know what's gonna happen. And if there are no coils available, where you can always get yourself some wire and cotton and wrap one up. And actually, I, 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 I prefer it to the coils that are in there. Yes, the coils that they have are pretty darn good, but this has worked out really good for me. If you get one of these, I would highly recommend you keep the little package that it comes in because there are some small parts, including this very, very tiny little hex key thing. Yeah, I would definitely hold on to that because that's what you need in order to install your coil. It might be hard to find one of the right size. So you're also gonna get a little bag that has extra O-rings and seals inside of here, just in case you need those. The tank and RBA are sitting over here and I'll show you that in just a minute. And then you've got this little thing right here and I'll show you what that is. Well, I'll just tell you, you can take this when you're building because that's one of the things about a rebuildable. For something as small as this and that goes inside of a tank like this, how in the heck do you actually build it and check it? Well, you just put this on your ohm reader and then that will screw inside of there the actual rba makes it pretty easy actually and that is included in the package so yeah you're going to want to maybe hold on to the packaging so you don't lose any of that stuff just for a quick lightning round look at this thing got your fire button right there it illuminates that's the uh, the green on there saying that i've got plenty of battery then it goes to blue then red usb c port right there and then over here is your tank that's where your airflow is and there we go you got little thumb divots in there to get to them and on this side. That's where your battery is. Battery comes out. Got a nice battery compartment and battery ribbon. Single 18650. So makes it nice because you don't have to keep charging up your device every time you want to use it. And this little button right here controls your wattage or your power output. So when we hit that, you'll see that there are two lights around there right now. Now there's three lights and four lights. One, two, three, four. Just as simple as that. I tend to like two lights on there. Now this bill that's in here is about 0 0.5, 0 0.55. And it's just a really eloquent looking little device. I mean, it feels great to the touch. It's like an anodized aluminum. It's it's pretty lightweight considering that there's a single battery inside of this thing. So let's check it out. So the way that these tanks fit in here, you don't have to remove this, but if you want to, you can actually get like a coin or something in there and remove this, but you don't need to do so. And you'll see that there's a little tab that's up here underneath that little divot. You just push that down and pull it out. It's spring loaded down here on the bottom. This has stayed really dry for an RBA, which is really good. Haven't had any leaking or anything like that, but again, with an RBA, it's gonna come down to how you wick it and whatnot. I got this little bowl and a paper towel here because, well, I got juice in here. And darn it, I don't really wanna lose it, but it looks like I might. We'll see, maybe I can just lay it down like this with a little bit of juice that's in there and I won't lose all of it. So all you have to do to get this out of here is pull it, just like that. Comes out, it's got two O-rings on there. Not too bad, not too bad. We'll just dry that off a little bit. You can see the wicks are sitting right down inside there like that. I used Cloud9 cotton for this and it actually worked out really good. It's premium 100% organic cotton from Australia. Super fast absorbent, fast switching of flavors and resists high temperatures. So you can see that this chimney piece right here is actually what's butting up right to that hole that's here on the top. And you can take this whole thing out of here just by unscrewing that and then take it off of the airflow. And then you remember this gold piece, it goes in just like that and screws on. And that's how you're going to be able to put it on an ohm reader like that. 
Yeah, I really like the build that I have in here. Actually, what's interesting is that I had some old coils around here because I, I was like, dude, do I have any 24 gauge around here? I actually found some coils that were from the Kanger RBA, you know, that had the leads that went opposite directions. Yeah, I had a little bag of pre-made coils straight from Kanger and was like, ooh, that works out just perfectly. So I'm gonna re-wick this one so we can take a look at it. So you can see I have the wicks that are down here. You know, I haven't overstuffed it and haven't understuffed it because if liquid can get up and through and over and down into the airflow, it's gonna. Now this is a postless deck. So here's one of the terminal screws and that's the other one over there. Let's just go ahead and pull this cotton out of here. All right, and there is my coil right there. You can see it's pretty snug, man. It's pretty tight down there to the bottom. You gotta get a better view of it without juice sitting under it. See that? So it's uh, it's pretty simple. There's actually a hole. Let me show you a picture of the deck without a build in it. So you can see that there's a hole right below the coil where the airflow goes. And then you've got two terminals opposite of that. So all I had to do is take this coil, make sure I clipped the leads in advance, and that took a little bit of time. It would have been nice if they included some kind of little measuring tool in there or some way to measure it, but it, you know, it's a learning curve. Once you get a couple of coils in here, you're, you're gonna know about how long to cut them. So yeah, you just drop them into the holes and you tighten those up and you are good to go. So again, I took the airflow off and I put this on here. That's the adapter for a 510. So we're just gonna go ahead. So now we've just, you know, we're just looking at the deck itself. So we can just go ahead and dry burn this and get all the crud off of it. And and that's the big advantage to having that adapter is that you can pop it onto an ohm reader and and really make sure you know what your ohms are and stuff before you actually put it into the device all right so yeah i mean you know this ohm reader for whatever jumps around just a little bit 0 0.55 that's that's actually really good for me it's perfect i'll let that cool off a little bit and get me some cotton now it's pretty much a micro coil in here so they cool off pretty quickly and quite easy to work with and kind of get an idea of what the coil looks like inside of there. It's not perfect, but you know, I like to space the coils. It makes it a little bit better, especially for something like this. And the coil's not too big and it's not too high. Get yourself a little bow tie and then you're gonna look and see how far that goes down. It's clearly too far. You just want it to come down here to the bottom of that little channel that's right there. You see that? So I start with one side and check it. And once I get it there, then I'll clip the other side. That way you can pull it through if you want to just a little bit. There we go. Looking good right there. Now you could use salts in here if you want to. I'm actually using a six milligram of standard liquids. It's vape lemonade, pink lemonade from Vaptasia. Good stuff, good stuff. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get that on there. Once I wet those wicks up a little bit, then I can just place that cotton into the channel like I want it to be. Now if you use too much, you might not get the capillary action you need to draw that liquid up. If you use too little, then liquid can get by it. If you use RBAs or RTAs, you're probably pretty familiar with that, but I feel like I need to let you know. See, this is why I don't like to build and wick on camera because I'm very slow and meticulous with it. There we go. Then we're just gonna take this right here and put it on. Now the cotton might be a little bit fat for getting that cap on there, so I'm just gonna tighten it up just a little bit. Let me go ahead and put this on here and we'll just screw it on just like that. You know, actually, almost skipped a step here. Let's put a little bit on there and fire it just to make sure you want to make sure your wick is getting wet before you put her in the tank all right and then we'll just go ahead and screw that on just like that and you can see that your cotton is sticking out there just a little bit i always kind of fluff it around a little bit just to make sure it's loose and ready to take in some juice loose and ready for the juice okay then we'll just remove this from here of course we're getting real juicy here i just like to wipe it down just in case then we're going to take this off then usually I'll go and wash this stuff off afterwards because it'll be juicy. And I recommend you make sure your hands are nice and dry and clean before you put this on because this part's actually going to be on the outside of the tank. Then you see we have an airflow on here and the airflow has big to small holes. You could get it all the way down there if you want to, but you know, there are two of them and I, I like it all the way open. Then you just take this and you shove it in there just like that. It just goes in. It's just press fit like that. I'm just going to wash my fingers off a little bit here. Then I'm going to use this to just make sure my tank is nice and dry on the outside here. Because you know what? If you stick a wet tank in there and you get some liquid inside the cavity, it's like, oh, this thing's leaking. But I got to tell you, I, you know, as long as you wick this thing right, I haven't had any leaking whatsoever from it. And it's, uh, it's worked out really well. Then that just goes back inside like that. And you can actually pop this up right here to fill it. Works real easy. Just go boop and fill it right there. 
once you get her all filled up, pop that back on and you are good to go. I, you know, I got to say, once this RBA became available for this thing, this has been uh, at least, I don't know, a partial daily driver. I use it every day. We'll put it that way. At least since I got the RBA. Till something new and shiny comes along and I go, oh, I must use that now. So that is the .aio RBA. So to me, this RBA just made a really good device, a really great device. I really enjoy it. It is very small. I mean, you're, if you've got disabilities or anything like that, you might have a difficult time with it. You might have to find somebody to build it for you. It's a postless deck, which there's a little bit of a learning curve on that, on how long to get the leads on it and all that stuff are. But once you get all that, it's, it's actually quite easy to build. Only complaints with the mod itself is where the airflow is, because where that airflow is, you know, because the button's on the opposite side, you tend to want to grab it like this and hold it well if you do you're pretty much covering up that airflow so you got to figure out another way to hold it either you're going to go like this or you're going to go like this you know something like that but once you figure that out it's kind of a muscle memory thing it, it it works out fine the terminal set screws and the tool kind of a little bit of a shortcoming for me because that tool is just it's very tiny and it's kind of cheapish it'd be nice if i got a you know just a bent allen wrench in there that would have been fine maybe i missed it but in the manual i didn't see what size that little wrench is you know if you lose that you're gonna to have to find a new one. Now, as far as the cost on this RBA unit, it is $35.99 at both Direct Vapor and Vapor DNA. On Dot Mod's website, it's like $40. It's not too terribly bad and you also get an extra tank with it the airflow that little adapter so that you could put it onto a ohm reader and extra parts it, to me it's a good value especially because the mod itself is 119 dollars it is not an inexpensive mod so if you're already spending that much you might as well go the extra mile because you know what it just makes this thing that much more future proof as long as you can get wire and you can get cotton you can still use this thing to vape, but if they somehow tell them that they can't make those coils anymore, I'm talking about the FDA or the government, well, then you're not going to be able to get coils anymore, right? So an RBA is a great addition to this thing. I don't know if there's any place where you can get deals for a combo or anything like that, a bundle deal, but I think cost-wise, if you already have one of these, definitely the RBA is it's, it's a good buy. So not much more to say about it than I've already said. Let's go ahead and see how it vapes. Yeah, you get a good size amount of cloud out of it. The flavor is actually quite good. And again, that's going to depend on your build. If you put a crappy build in there, don't get good cotton or whatever. It may not have great flavor. You're just going to have to try again. The way that I tend to hold it most of the time is with the airflow on that side right there, the button on this side, and then I just hit it like that. Yeah, it functions really, really well. And of course, because you can build it yourself, you can play with the ohms a little bit. If you want a little bit higher ohms, you can do that. If you want a little bit lower ohms, you can do that. Of course, they do give you the recommendations inside the manual, which I thought was a very good idea. Oh yeah, they could have included a little tool in there, maybe just like a little block with holes in it that you could put your coil through there and snip those leads off so that you get it exactly the right height so you don't have to play around with clipping the leads. But I was able to figure it out pretty quickly, but I build a lot, so there's that. And if you don't feel like it's kicking enough, then we'll just go ahead and hit that little button right there and jack up the, uh, you know, the wattage a little bit and we'll try it that way. Yeah, I, I tend to find two lights on this works just well for me. So there we go, the dot AIO RBA and got a quick look at the AIO as well. So the bottom line is I like it. I like it quite a bit. I like it enough that I'm using it, which kind of says a lot because, you know, I'm always testing out new stuff. If there's something I turn to and grab it more often than others, then it, it's got to be good. Hey, I want to thank you so much for your support here on the channel. Likes, comments, shares, subscriptions are always very important to a channel like mine. It's very humbling to me and I really do appreciate your support. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, there is a red subscribe button down there. And if you think you're subscribed, just take a look at that button every once in a while. If it's great, you're still subscribed if it's red you're not subscribed youtube unsubscribes people all the time it happens to me on channels i like so just click it again i'd appreciate that it's also a notification bell down there if you want to get notifications every time i upload a new video that's a little bell and i've got links down there for facebook twitter pinterest and instagram if you want to keep up with what's going on with advocacy the best one for me anyways is on my facebook page because it makes it really easy for me to share these stories with you and i encourage you to share all that information with people that don't vape because i guess it's pretty much up to us to kind of turn the the tide because the media they just don't seem to help i've done several interviews with the media the ones that have used it didn't use the stuff i wanted them to use 
some of them have been pretty fair, like the Washington Post. And some of them just don't use it at all because it doesn't fit their narrative. So we need to tell people. We need to educate ourselves so we can educate others. And I've got a bunch of links down there that'll help you with that for advocacy. So please do check those out. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. We'll catch you next time on the Vapor Trail channel.